phrase, uh, uh, Bible, uh, B-I-B-L-E. Some of y'all know what I'm going to say. Basic instructions before leaving earth, Amen. right? B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. And so uh, the Bible is God's word to us. Uh, as I've uh, said on many occasions, that uh, prophecy, and, and right now, you know, and we have been in a series on prophecy, you know, this is what's known as eschatology, right? Uh, eschatos in the Greek means last. Uh, ology, the study of. So eschatology is the study of last things. And so we've been looking at last things, and I've said this uh, uh, on many occasions, and that is one third, the basic instructions before leaving earth. One third of the basic instructions before leaving earth is prophecy. So uh, it's important to study prophecy. I know a lot of people that don't wanna, you know, they wanna look at other things, you know, and which is good. I mean. Uh, we should preach the whole counsel of God, but we understand that prophecy is very important. So we continue in our series on prophecy. As I share my screen, uh, last week, uh, Brother Al Alexander asked a question, uh, and the question uh, that he asked was, uh, what is Christian nationalism? What is Christian nationalism? And, uh, you know, I, I mean, it, it, it'll make an interesting study. And I, you know, I don't have time to uh, study it. Uh, but there's an excellent article, if you want to go and read it, in Christianity Today. And the title of the article is, What is Christian Nationalism? Uh, and this is an explainer on how the belief differs from other forms of nationalism, patriotism, and Christianity. A uh, very well-rounded article, uh, and it definitely makes a distinction between Christianity and Christian nationalism. And there is a, a very distinct uh, difference between the two. Uh, the article was written by Paul D. Miller, uh, and it can be found in Christianity Today, uh, February 3rd, uh, 2021. So I believe, because uh, what I did, I went online. I believe you go online and you type in this information here that it'll pull up that particular article for you. Uh, if not, I do have a copy of it and I can forward it to Naomi. And if uh, you desire to have a copy of this particular article uh like i said i can send it to naomi and she'll have it and you can just let her know and then she can uh send it out to you but again a uh, very interesting article uh and just to say uh you know because I, I know brother al alexander you know had asked the question that there is a difference there is a distinct difference between christianity and christian nationalism right and uh Christian nationalism, uh, some people see that more of a political uh, movement. So, you know, again, uh, you know, we try we try to get your answers. Uh, I uh, I'm on a show uh, called Hard Questions, where we answer uh, questions right out of the Bible. You know, people call in, they ask us any question, uh, and, and most of the questions are about the Bible, uh, but they ask us any question. Uh, that they uh, think is relevant to theology, Christianity, religion, uh, the Bible. And, you know, we answer the questions out of the Bible. And I also uh, answer questions, and I would uh, recommend this website to uh, anybody, uh, and it's called gotquestions.org. Uh, if you have any question, uh, you can go to gotquestions.org. And, uh, you know, you can... Uh, put in your question and see if there's an answer. And if there's no answer to your question on the website, if you send your question in to gotquestions.org, someone will personally uh, answer that question uh, that you have. 
so, you know, uh, I, I don't know if, if, if many of you have been following uh, the daily devotion, I mean, the weekly devotions, but I just completed a series last week, and the title of the series was uh, the, the, the Denomination of the Ignorant Brethren. <laughs> the Denomination of the Ignorant Brethren. And Paul said, I believe four times in the New Testament, I would not have you ignorant brethren, right? So he says that, you know, as Christians, we shouldn't be ignorant. And so when you look at, and I just look at two things that I'm personally involved in, hard questions and gotquestions.org. And if you look at just those two resources, my brothers and sisters, there's no reason for Christians to be a part of the denomination of the ignorant brethren. Uh, you know, you can have your questions answered. Uh, there is answers to your questions. All right. So uh, again, uh, we encourage you, uh, if you want this article right here on Christian nationalism, uh, you can, uh, I'll, I'll send it to Naomi. Uh, you can get it from her. If you want to go online and find it for yourself, you can do that. Uh, hard questions. Uh, I know we come on three times a week. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the other two times, but I definitely know it comes on Sunday afternoons at 4.30. Sunday afternoons at 4.30 on Cornerstone Television. And that's hard questions. And then uh, gotquestions.org, gotquestions.org. All right. Uh, so hopefully uh, that will help you to not be a part of the denomination of the ignorant brethren. And I, I would encourage you to even go back Go back and read those. I think I did four devotions on it, the denomination of the ignorant brethren. So you can go back and uh, probably read those too. All right. Uh, so we are doing a study on prophecy. And uh, so far, uh, we've looked at the judgments. We went in detail through the seven seal judgments, the seven trumpet judgments, and the seven bowl judgments. And if you want those notes, uh, if you don't have those notes and you want those notes, you know, again, you can uh, contact Naomi and she will get a copy of those notes uh, to you, uh, the judgments. And we've looked at characters and we are looking at characters right now. We looked at the 144,000 witnesses. We talked about who they were. Uh, we looked at the two witnesses in Revelation 11. 11. Who, who are those two witnesses? Well, there's a lot of different viewpoints as to who those individuals are. And last week, we started looking at the unholy trinity, and we looked at the dragon, and we said that the dragon was Satan. So, you know, we did a, a study last week on the dragon, uh, who is Satan, and today we are looking at the unholy trinity, the second person of the whole unholy trinity, which is the first beast. Uh, here, uh, we see the dragon is the anti-God. The first beast is the anti-Christ. Uh, the second beast is the false prophet or the anti-spirit. So uh, just like, let me, just like we have the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, during the tribulation, we will see another Trinity, which will be the unholy or hellish or satanic trinity uh this will be the dragon uh we looked at the dragon last week the first beast which is the antichrist and we'll look at this character today and then next week we'll look at the second beast which is the false prophet and john said in revelation 16 13 and i saw three unclean frogs or spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, the unholy trinity. Now, let me say this, that about a year and a half ago, some of you may remember, I did a detailed study on the Antichrist. Uh, it's, it's a 21-page it's a outline, and it, it, it answers just about every question that you might have about the Antichrist. So again, you know, we don't want you to be a part of the denomination of the ignorant brethren. So and many of you got that. Now, I will say this, 
that since I put that out about a year and a half ago, I have made some additions and updates to it, you know, because when you look at, uh, you know, prophetic things, uh, they are constantly changing. Uh, there's new information that's coming out, especially in light of technology. Uh, you know, this thing, saints, this thing called uh, artificial intelligence is amazing. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll do a study uh, one day, and maybe when we get finished with the, uh, the unholy trinity, and then there's two more things that I want to handle after that. Uh, maybe we'll do a study on artificial intelligence, because this is crazy. You know, this, this world that we live in, how that they can make people, you know, who are dead. Now, you, you and you may remember, uh, <laughs> remember Nat King Cole? And uh, he uh, had a daughter, and y'all, you guys know his daughter, Natalie Cole. And now Nat King Cole been dead for years. But you remember when they uh, did the song, uh, what is it, Unforgettable? Uh, that's who you are, right? Uh, when they did that song and how that uh, Nat King Cole was dead, right? But him and his daughter sang the song together. See, how do, how do you do that? I, I, that's that that's that artificial intelligence you know that that they're able to to do that and and so uh next week as a matter of fact we, we're going to look a little bit at this next week when we look at the uh, false prophet because the false false prophet will will use artificial intelligence so you know maybe uh you know what maybe i'll do a little maybe, maybe i can incorporate that a little bit next week when we look at the uh the false prophet but you know, I did do a a book booklet on the Antichrist, and uh, you know, again, uh, so you know, I did a that, and, and I did an in depth study. I think we did like a two or three week study on the Antichrist. So today, you know, I'm not going to revisit that study. Uh, my objective today is to talk about how the Antichrist fits into the uh, hellish Trinity. Or the unholy trinity so that's that's how we're going to look at the uh, antichrist today so would encourage you to get that resource you know we got plenty of resources uh that have been put out by pastor glaze and by uh, bethany baptist church you know one of my goals uh before i die you know i want to i want to help uh stamp out biblical illiteracy you know again there's no reason for the child of God to be illiterate. That's why I've, I've written, you know, uh, over 11 books, you know, uh, articles left and right that, that you know, I've, I've put out there because I want to uh, videos, you know, we, we tape this uh, teaching on Wednesday afternoons. We tape Sunday morning services so that people can uh, understand what the word of God says and that they don't have to be. Uh, a part of the denomination of the ignorant brethren. Okay, so uh, if, if maybe you weren't with us at the time we did this in-depth study on the Antichrist, uh, you can get those uh, those notes. All right, uh, we're in Revelation 13 uh, as we look at this hellish trinity. So if you have your Bibles, uh, I'd like to read uh, Revelation 13 verses one and two. And again, uh, and I, at, at the sake of being redundant, you know, I did do an in-depth study uh, on the uh, on the Antichrist, and uh, you know, we get we get into that. So it's not my objective to uh, do that this afternoon. Now, uh, you you did receive some notes, all right. Uh, those of you who uh, have a computer, uh, you should have received the Bible study notes, and uh, as we look at uh, this uh, first beast in Revelation uh, 13, verses 1 and 2. He says, and I stood, and this is the Apostle John, you know, who is, uh, uh, is writing this. Uh, uh, this was revealed to him. Uh, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns, 10 crowns, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. 
And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dra oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. The dragon. Now, where, 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 where do we know the dragon from? Right? Where do we know the dragon? Last week, we spent a whole week talking about the dragon. All right? So put on your Bible hats right now. Let me ask you a question. Put on your Bible hats. Let me ask you a question. All right? And, uh, you know, I can't see you. I'm, you know, I, I'm just teaching to the screen here. So, But I know you out there. <laughs> I know you out there. Who is the, who is the uh, dragon? All right. Who is the dragon? I, I don't want you don't have to raise your hand or anything. I, like I said, I can't see anybody. So you don't have to raise your hand or anything. But just can you answer that question to yourself? Who is the dragon? All right. And we know from last week, we spent a whole week on that, that the dragon is Satan. The dragon is Satan. All right. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and his great authority. So. The average person that would read this would say, what in the world is John talking about, right? So that's why people need to be in a Bible study somewhere. You, you, you need to be in a Bible study where uh, the word of God is being taught because you run across stuff like this. And unless you have a, a good set of commentaries, you know, you, you're kind of left scratching your head. You know, what, what is he talking about here? So let's go ahead and break this down, right? You see uh, a picture on the uh, right hand part of your screen of this beast. And this is the first beast. You know, uh, this beast, uh, John tells us, uh, stood upon the sand of the sea. Uh, and it came where? Uh, it came up out of the sea. And notice it says, John says that it had uh, having seven heads. Okay, so, you know, again, what does that mean? Seven heads. Seven, God's perfect number, God's number of completion, right? Heads, what do heads represent? They, they represent leadership. They represent kingdoms. They represent control right? So it had seven heads, which means that it had control over the whole earth. And so when the Antichrist comes, he will have control over the whole earth. Uh, notice this. He also has 10 horns. He will be the head of a 10 nation kingdom, which is represented by these 10 horns. Okay. So this beast has seven heads, which represents total control over the earth. Now, if you look at things that are happening today, right? And if you look at the pandemic that we just came out of, and, you know, thank God for, uh, you know, the medicine that people was able to get to help them to be able to deal with, you know, this pandemic. Uh, but you know, sadly, the government and the governments of this world actually took this to use as a part of trying to control people, right? Now, again, I'm, I'm all for the medicine, right? And I, I praise God, you know, for the medicine and, you know, people that were able to get, you know, the medicine that they needed to build up their immune system against this virus. Uh, because that, that's, that's, that's the good part, right? That's the good part. But when you look at, and, and, you know, I did a teaching on, on governments, you know, I, I, it, it was some time back and, you know, we talked about how governments want to control. And, and so, uh, here the antichrist will be the ultimate controller, right? His seven heads represents his control that he wants to have control over the earth and anybody that speaks anything against him you know will be shut down he has 10 horns which means that you know he'll be the uh the, the head of a 10 kingdom confederacy 
And, uh, you know, many people uh, believe that the uh, Roman Empire, that this is this refers to the revived Roman Empire. You know, when you go back and you look at the kingdoms of this earth, you know, go back to Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon. You know, we saw that in the book of Daniel, Babylon, Medio Persia, Greece, and then what? Rome. And Rome was the last world kingdom. Think about that. Rome was the last world kingdom. You know, when we think about even you go back into the Old Testament, at one point, Egypt was was a world ruler. Uh, Israel was a world ruler. Right. And then we get into the book of Daniel, like I said, Babylon and you have Medio Persia, you have Greece and then you have Rome. So uh, this Roman Empire will be revived under the Antichrist and he will be the head of a, a 10 nation kingdom. Notice what it also says in Revelation 13, one, the beast is swift like a leopard. So you look at the, the image on the right, look at uh, that's leopard, right? He has the, the spots of a leopard and uh, brutal like a bear, right? And you look at uh, the feet uh, uh, of, the, of the image, it's, it's a bear and, and strong like a lion and look at the faces is a lion. So this this is a this is a this is a terrible looking creature, right? This creature has what seven heads. It has ten horns. Uh, it has uh, feet uh, like a bear. It has it moves like a leopard, and it has uh, the strength of a lion. And so you see the image there, right? So all this all this is what saints. All this represents the Antichrist right? All this represents the Antichrist kingdom. So instead of John saying, again, uh, revel revelation, let me throw a big word out at you, apocalyptic, right? A re revelation is apocalyptic. And all that means is it is, it, it has a lot of symbolic language, right? A lot of symbolism. So in Revelation 13, 1, we see a lot of symbolism. Right. John could have said in the Antichrist that he had all power over the earth. He ruled 10 nations. He conquered like he conquered quickly. He was strong and he was brutal. Right. John could have said all that. Right. And, and we would have said, now, you know what? That, <laughs> that makes sense to me. I can understand that. But John put it in symbolic language. Now, let, let, let me give you an insight to this, right? Uh, some people believe that John used symbolic language because he was getting his message out and he didn't necessarily want the uh, Roman government to uh, understand what he was saying. So some people say that he, was, uh, he used symbolic language. Now, you know, the average Jewish person would have understood all that John was writing. Why? Because all you got to do is go back into the Old Testament and you see these things, right? And so the average, you know, Jewish person that understood the scripture, you know, would have known what John was talking about. So John uses this imagery here just to describe one individual and that one individual is the, uh, is the Antichrist, all right? Uh, look at verse three, that this beast is deceptive right? The beast is deceptive. Uh, Revelation 13, 3. And I saw one of his heads as though it were wounded to death. And the deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. So let me go back, right? He has seven heads. Okay, look at that image. You see the seven heads, right? Now notice this, that one of those heads Receive the wound. And that's where we come to the next page. Uh, one of the heads received a, a, a fatal uh, blow. And it, it almost looked like, uh, uh, we'll look at uh, the notes uh, that we have here, uh, that there are several in, uh, interpretations uh, regarding this, uh, this deadly wound. Okay, uh, first, 
is he receives a death blow, but it is only faking his death and his resurrection since Satan cannot raise the dead. All right. So who are we talking about? We're talking about the Antichrist, right? And the Antichrist is that the word anti means against or even in place of. So if he's the Antichrist, then what is he going to try to do? He's going to try to mimic what Christ did. And so what happened to Christ? Christ was crucified. He was buried and he rose again. All right. So uh, some people believe that this death blow uh, was the uh, was the Antichrist faking his death. And and then you know he's going to make people think that he can that he resurrected uh, from the dead. But we know that, you know, Satan can't give life. He can only, Satan only gives death. So uh, he, may, he may be, you know, he gets this fatal blow. He may be faking his death, right? And then uh, comes back to life, making people think that, you know, he rose again. He receives a fatal wound and is miraculously healed. That's another interpretation. Uh, the ruler, this Antichrist, is killed and is is resurrected to life again. You know, now some people would say, well, you know, he was literally killed. You know, the difference between this and the first, number one, is that in number one, he fakes his death, right? He fakes his death. And then he comes back like he rose from the dead. But in number three, uh, some people believe that he will actually be killed and resurrected again. And then some people believe that uh, verse three refers to the resurrection of Judas Iscariot uh, because uh, Judas is called the son of perdition and also Satan is called the son of perdition. So we see here that this first beast receives a deadly blow. All right. We see the influence of the beast. And in Revelation, uh, verse four, and they worship the dragon. So we're back to the dragon again. Who is the dragon? The dragon is Satan. And they worship the dragon who gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Unlike Christ, who is worshiped for his holiness, his righteousness, his love, and his mercy, the Antichrist is worshiped for his miraculous power, invincibility, and deceit, right? That's why he, you know, Christ, why, why do we, why do you worship Christ? You worship Christ because he's holy. God, you are holy. God, you are righteous. God, you love us. God, you are merciful. God, you are gracious. That's why we worship Christ. But look, people will worship the Antichrist because they're afraid of him, <laughs> because of his power, because nobody can conquer him, because he goes forth uh, to deceive people. And, 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 and saints, this spirit is already in the world. You know, we worship evil. You know, again, I, I, I told you last week uh, that if, if you're not on Alan Parr's uh, weekly video uh, distribution, you need to get on that. Uh, I, again, the ignorant, we don't want you to be ignorant, brother. Uh, brother Alan Parr, uh, I don't know, he's got millions of followers. You know, I've, well, I, let me put it this way. He got a lot of followers. Now, I, it, it may be millions or it may be hundreds of thousands. I'm not sure. But he got a bunch. Brother Alan Parr has a bunch of followers. And you know the thing about Alan is that you know where he grew up? You know what church he grew up in? Uh, some of y'all know. <laughs> some of y'all know. He grew up in Bethany Baptist Church, right? He grew up in Bethany Baptist Church. And now he's out there. He's impacting the world with his teachings, right? 
And he did a teaching a couple months ago on Beyonce. And 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 man, it, Saints, if you haven't uh seen that video, you need to go back and see the video. Because this is the spirit that's in the world today. This is the spirit in which the Antichrist will operate in. And just think, man, I mean, the world is is in love with uh with Beyonce. You know, and uh, you know, she sang the song. I don't know a lot of Beyonce songs, right? But uh the one song I know, if you what is it, if you if you love me, you better put a ring on it. You know, that's now there, there, there's some good theology in that one right there, right? You know, she should have sang more songs like that. Uh but you know, this spirit of antichrist is in the world today. Uh, you know, my wife keeps telling me, now I didn't you know, I didn't notice it. If you watch the halftime at the Super Bowl, when uh, Rihanna sang, you know they they said that she made a couple of uh, lewd gestures. That unless I guess you were looking for it, that you would have missed it. Everybody else, man, you you watch the reviews the next day, and uh, and they said that wow, she was great. You know, a great great halftime show. But nobody is talking about you know those gestures that she made, those ungodly gestures that that she made. And so, you know, we, we, oh my goodness. You know, man, we worship the singers. We worship them. You know, we bow down and, 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 and we see these deceptive things that are, that are taking place. And, and people's hearts are after them. The young, the young people's hearts are after them. Now I know, I know. Here goes somebody. I already hear somebody saying it. Right? Come on, Pastor Glaze, man. Leave Beyonce and Rihanna alone. Leave them alone. Right? And you know what? I, I really could, but they're just influencing so many people. And that's, and not influencing them in a in a godly way, right? I mean, now they might be doing some good things. But there's a whole lot of deception that's going on there too. So again, you know, I, you know, you, I, I implore you, look at the video that Alan put out where he's dealing with the facts, right? He's, he, he's gone through, he's dealing with the facts of, of what this is about. And saints, this is the spirit of the antichrist. You know, somebody uh, asked a question, you know, is the antichrist here? Well, I don't know if the Antichrist is here, not or yet, but the spirit of the Antichrist is definitely here. And it's been around since John's day. The spirit of the Antichrist is, is definitely here. So, you know, in the if you get the notes, uh, the outline of the booklet that I put together on the Antichrist, you know, in there we talk about who 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 are some possibilities that uh could be the Antichrist. Is the Antichrist Jewish? Is he Muslim? Is he Gentile? You know, ha have there been people in the past that could have been the anti? So I deal with all that in the book. So you want to, you, again, you want to get through, and it's free. The book is free. You know, it will be uh, sent to you uh, via email. Now, uh, for those of you who uh, want the hard copy of it, uh, there may be a little uh, charge for that. Uh, but, uh, and that's just for, you know, having to mail it out. Uh, but if you get it emailed to you, it's absolutely free. Because why? I'm trying to get this word out, man. You know, I, I remember uh, when I went to uh, Africa and uh, Andre Cassell, you know, was over there and he told me something that I'll never forget. He said that, you know, Muslims over there, he said they got all kind of literature and books. And he said that the Muslims give it out for free. Because they want they want to indoctrinate people, and he said that you know all, all these groups from America, you know that that have books and tracks and all this stuff. He said that you know that they're copyrighted, and you know you know we got to try to get money to purchase them to hand them out, and uh, and it's, he says just sometimes it becomes very very difficult, and I never forget that. And I said you know what, I said Lord, I said as much as possible. You know, the stuff that I, I make, you know, I, if, if, I get people calling me, 
Pastor Glaze, can I make a copy of uh, of something in your book and, and pass it out, right? Which I don't, I tell them now, some people get mad at me now, right? Uh, but I tell them, I, no, I don't have a problem with that. You know, go ahead. Why? Because I'm interested in getting out the information. So even the notes that I send out, if you want to make a copy of the notes and you want to send them out to somebody else, I have no problem with that because I, I just want to get the information out. I, I want people to be able, to, again, to not be a part of the denomination of the ignorant brethren, right? And so, uh, you know, again, now I know that there's copyright laws. I, I understand all that. So, you know, I, I, I respect the copyright laws. I'm just saying as far as my stuff is concerned, that if somebody asks me, can they make copies of it? I have no problem with it. Uh, you know, now see, I, I'm probably really going to get in trouble now. But if you want to make a copy of the whole book, you know, that's fine. You know, they say, well, you you wrote that, man. You're supposed to be making money off of it. Well, yeah, I mean, if I can make money to pay for the books that I ran off, right, or that that that, that we had printed, praise God. But I would rather for you to have the information than for me to get some money to pay the the printer, right? Uh, I'll take the hit on the printer because I want you to have the information. All right. How did I get off on that, man? You, Pastor Glaze, you you done, you done jump, jumped off here, <laughs> right? But yeah, uh, so, you know, the thing is, is that we want you to have the information. And 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 because, uh, you know, there, there's, there's just a lot that's out here in this world today. The spirit of the Antichrist is already here. It's already here, saints. And, you know, you, you have to, I, I did a devotion, right? It, it hasn't been published yet. Uh, and I, I, I told you, man, I, I, I like the Lone Ranger, right? And, uh, and so I was watching the Lone Ranger one day. Now check, this is powerful. This is a powerful illustration, right? And there was the Lone Ranger and Tonto and the sheriff. And they were chasing some crooks, right? And they were following their tracks. And all of a sudden, their tracks disappeared. And the Lone Ranger and Tonto and the sheriff, they didn't know where these crooks went to. And Tonto got off his horse. And he saw a broken branch on a bush. And he examined it. And he said, uh, Kimosabi, they went this way. And the sheriff was like, man, how in the world does he do that? How does he do that? And the Lone Ranger said, Tonto has been trained to see signs that the average person misses. <laughs> Mic drop. Mic drop. Tonto has been trained to see signs that the average person misses. That should be the testimony of every Christian. We should be able to see, we should have discernment and we should be able to see signs that the world can't see. Notice what it says here on this slide that I have up. The Antichrist is worshiped for his miraculous power, invincibility, and what? His deceit. He deceives people. You know, we as Christians should not be caught up in this deceit and this deception that we should be like Tonto we should be trained to see the signs that average that the average person misses right oh man yeah why y'all get me started this afternoon why you get me started this afternoon we see the blasphemy of the beast the blasphemy of the beast let me do something here in Revelation 13, 6. And it says, uh, and he opened his mouth. Well, let's go back. Verse, uh, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven the antichrist will be blasphemous 
what what are the objects of his blasphemy? First of all, God. He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Against God in the Greek is pros ton theon, and it it means face to face. The beast will blaspheme God to his face. He will the beast will ball his fists up, shake his hand in the air, and blaspheme God face to face. Right? He he not only blasphemes God but he also blasphemes God's name, all that God stands for, right? All that God stands for. If you look at the world today, everything that's righteous and holy is being undercut, right? It's being bl blasphemed. You know, people, people tell these young people today that uh, there's something wrong with you if you're a virgin, right? All that God stands for is, is blasphemous. There's something wrong with you if you haven't got high, right? There's something wrong with you if, uh, I, I remember a guy told my son one time, you know, as as because my son had, uh, was driving my wife's vehicle and he backed into a, uh, well, he said he backed into a tree and he uh, knocked out the window, right? And uh, and he was uh, talking to this one guy and the guy will say, man, if you turn that in, it's going to shoot up your insurance. You know, he said, just, uh, just tell him, he told my son, just tell the insurance company that, uh, that somebody hit you and then they'll pay for it. Right. Come on, man. Blasphemy of what's right. You know, trying to get young people to lie and, and, and tell lies. You know, blaspheme God, all that God stands for. That's what the Antichrist will do. Uh, the tabernacle, which is what? God's place of worship. The inhabitants of heaven, the angels and the redeemed, you know, that, that the Antichrist will blaspheme, you know, the redeemed, make fun of you and make fun of me, right? Because uh, that's what he does. Uh, Look at the victory of the Antichrist, the victory of the first beast, seven and eight. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Now, remember, what did I tell you earlier? I told you that what is the objective of the Antichrist? Power, control. He wants to control. And so, you know, we have to be careful when these entities, you know, because they, 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 they're trying to, you know, even in the church, you know, they, they, they're trying to, you know, control, right? They want to control, you know, you, you may remember a couple of years ago in Houston uh, that the mayor, you know, so wanted to subpoena all the sermons of the pastors in Houston to make sure that they weren't preaching anything against you know, uh, homosexuality or, you know, uh, any, anything that was against what they believed, right? And so they subpoenaed all the, the, uh, the, the pastor's sermons, but the pastors came together and they stood up and they fought it. And uh, uh, the mayor had to back down off of that, right? But what was that about? That's about control. And what is the antichrist about? Man, come on now, plain and simple. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power, control was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. The beast will be given power over all the earth he will persecute the saints to the point of death he will hold all political power and in daniel chapter 7 and verse 3 tells us that uh he will hold all political power he'll hold all religious power so in a couple of weeks we're going to look at this and see how that uh that 
the Antichrist will take control of religion and, and, and religious entities will not have a voice because he will take control of it. Uh, once again, we see the inhabitants of the earth worshiping the beast. We see them worshiping, which is the, you know, you know, again, uh, what is the ultimate objective of the Antichrist? Well, just like Christ receives worship, the Antichrist wants to receive worship also. And uh, and so, you know, the, the, the beast has victory uh, here on this earth. Let me see here. Uh, and John closes out with a warning, with a warning in verses nine and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth to captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints, right? And, and so a warning, warning. You remember that, uh, uh, that, that old TV program, Lost in Space? Warning, 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 right? <laughs> so here's a warning. Those who follow the beast will reap the consequences of the punishment they have inflicted on others. If they have taken saints into captivity, they will be taken into captivity. If they have killed the saints with the sword, they will be killed with the sword. At the end of verse 10 is an admonition for the saints to be faithful and patient during the time of persecution. Hey, you know what? Just be, just, you know, you know, you know the beautiful thing about Revelation is all you got to do is go to the end of the book and read it and you see who wins, right? You see who wins. And so, you know, we just have to be patient that we might, you know, and, and again, you know, we're, we're going to be out of here, right? Because uh, the rapture is going to take place. So we'll be gone. But those saints that will be here, uh, he says, be patient and faith. Don't, you know, don't, don't lose faith. Keep the faith because it'll soon be over. You know, I'm, I'm in my study and I'll, I'll, I'll say this and I'll be done. Uh, I was uh, preaching at a revival uh, out in New Mexico and uh, a guy gave me a, a, a little uh, sign and I got it hanging right in front of me. And uh, it, uh, it's a picture of a cat and uh, the cat is, is holding on to uh, uh, a pole or a board or something. And he looks like he's holding on for dear life, dear life. And the caption on there says, hang in there. It'll soon be over, right? And so that, that, that's what God is telling these saints. Hang in there, hang in there. It's gonna be over, you know, that, that you might be going through some persecution right now, but hang in there because it'll be, it'll be over. All right, let me, uh, I probably pontificated a little bit too much today, but uh, <laughs> all right. Questions. Amen. Questions, comments, comments, snide remarks. Yes. <laughs> it's quiet today, pastors. I got something. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. <clears throat> you know I'm going to have something. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, one thing I, I uh, talking about Beyonce, Rihanna, and some of these other entertainers. Um, I think some of the stuff that they talk about them being part of the Illuminati, and of course, you know, folks who are in the Illuminati say the Illuminati doesn't exist. <laughs> but uh, my point is that, um, you know, there's a lot of secret societies out there and they have been out there for hundreds of years. Um, we could probably even say thousands, but, uh, and a lot of Christians have, uh, I will say, have fallen prey to some of these organizations and not knowing a lot of the history of them. And, and I've always, you know, I remember as a kid, I forgot who said it about, you know, knowledge is clout or knowledge is power. And, um, and I'm always open to learning things so that I'm aware. It's not that I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, 
I mean, get sucked into it or whatever. But it's just that you're aware that these things do 